now on 2GB Sydney and network stations across Australia. It's time for Wide World of Sports with Mark Levy. Thanks to McDonald's. Hi everyone, welcome to Wide World of Sports on this Monday the 2nd of August and what a dramatic weekend for the NRL after the competition was shut down by Queensland's Chief Health Officer because of a COVID outbreak in Brisbane. The state government placing 11 LGAs in lockdown, much the same as what we've got here in Sydney. Peter Volandis and Andrew Abdo were taken by surprise and they worked tirelessly to seek the necessary exemptions from the health officials and thankfully common sense prevailed. There was a triple header yesterday at Suncorp, two games tonight in Brisbane and that game between the Bulldogs and the Titans underway. Seven minutes gone, first half, nil all between the Doggies and the Titans. We'll keep across those scores for you as well. Uh, I spoke to both the ARL chairman and the NRL chief executive over the weekend on the continuous call team and as much as we criticise the administrators over things like rule changes and blowout score lines, I think we're lucky to have them in the trenches for us. Mr Abdo was involved in 12 hours of negotiations with the bureaucrats in Queensland and given what he's been able to achieve, it might be worthwhile for the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, to get him involved in Australia's dealings with China. Uh, I'm still scratching my head at the decision from Stephen Miles and Dr Jeanette Young when the players and coaches are effectively in bubbles. Wayne Bennett also made the point over the weekend that they've never been more COVID compliant. Uh, The disrespect as well shown by the Queensland government is extraordinary when the NRL is injecting over $40 million into the local economy at the moment. Uh, The league was made to jump through hoops to satisfy the health officials up there and they approved the protocols that were put in place. So the question needs to be asked of Dr Young, what changed over the course of the weekend? I'd also love to know why the Eagle Farm and Gold Coast races were allowed to proceed. The Albion Park trots went ahead on Saturday night but we couldn't watch the football. As I said on Saturday, I really feel for those people who have been forced to close businesses or have lost work because of these lockdowns. But when the NRL has put in place safeguards to protect everyone from this virus, why would they shut it down? If you're listening to me over, if you have listened to me over the last month and over the weekend on the continuous call team, you would know that I've been a strong advocate for Brisbane to host the grand final because the Queenslanders deserve the biggest game of the season if it's not in Sydney. Does it surprise me, though, that the MCG has emerged as a candidate? Well, no. No, it doesn't. Because when you consider the Victoria government came to the party on the weekend and offered to help wherever it can, whereas the Queensland government instead put up brick walls. So I thought we'd have a chat about it tonight on 131873. You can email me at 2gb.com and text me 0460 873 873. What did you make of the decision to suspend the competition on Saturday morning? And where do you think we should be playing the NRL Grand Final? The number 131873 and the text line up and running, 0460 873 873. I'll also check in with Natalie Peters, who's out in our Olympic studio. What about the Aussie swimmers in Tokyo? It's their best ever performance in the pool with nine gold medals. The track and field continues tonight. We've got some track cycling as well. And you might like to share your opinion on the high jumpers agreeing to share the gold medal last night. I thought it was a great act of sportsmanship, but at the same time, would you do the same thing? If you got to that point in a competition, would you be happy to settle for a draw or would you have been, or do you think they should have been made to continue until there was a winner? Let me know your thoughts on that because, like I say, I'm a bit torn. 131873, the number. Elsewhere in sport, the AFL was affected by the lockdown in Queensland as well. Daniel Ricciardo finished 11th behind Esteban Ocon at the Hungarian Grand Prix. And Warney, Shane Warnes tested positive for COVID while coaching an English cricket team in the 100 tournament. So a stack to get through. We'll be joined by Drew Hutchison and Mitchell Pearce to talk some footy. But let's jump into our Monday night edition of Wide World of Sports. Here's a man who was on the telly over the course of the weekend and uh, no doubt watching some footy tonight. He will be anyway. Billy Slater. Hello, Bill. G'day, Leeds. I certainly will be. What a, what a crazy 24 hours we had over the weekend when we had three games postponed. We didn't know whether we were going to have to call the competition off or, or postpone it for 24 hours. And um, Andrew Abdo and Peter Volandis and their team have, have worked extremely hard and got the game back on our screen. So... I'm very thankful for that. I know it was only a 24-hour disruption, let's call it, Billy, but some of the work that was done behind the scenes, I I don't know whether you agree with me, but we're very lucky to have the two people in charge that we do because who knows what we'd be talking about tonight, if not over the last 18 months, if it wasn't for the work that they've done. 
and the contingency plans that they've put in place over the last 12 months. So, uh, look, I, I'm no politician. I, I, I don't want to get involved in whether it should have been called off or, or the Queensland government did the right thing or wrong thing. But what I, what I do know is I know at, at this particular time, when everyone's doing it tough, we need entertainment and we need outlets. Um, so to get our sport back on the air... I think it's been extremely important. I know you're not a politician, and I don't want a political answer to this next mm. question. It's around <laughs> it's around the grand final because you're torn champion. You're based okay. in Melbourne. You're a former yeah. Storm. Well, you are a Storm legend. Uh, the Melbourne Storm are on top of the competition. Uh, I've been a, a, an advocate of playing the game in the grand final in Brisbane. Victoria government's come to the party. The MCG looking like a potential candidate. What's your view on it, Billy? And I know this may be a tough one for you to answer. Oh, look, I think both cities deserve the grand final. I think you can make a case for, for Melbourne to, to deserve the grand final. I can certainly make a case for Brisbane. Um, all the teams are up there at the moment. They're, they're, they're housing all the players, all their families, and, um, and we've got the game continuing on. So I, I can make a case for both. Selfishly, as a Melbourne Storm player or an ex-Melbourne Storm player, you know, it'd be great to have it down in Melbourne. But Melbourne Storm aren't guaranteed a spot in the grand final either so we can't just assume that they're going to be there and and just have it down in melbourne um to repay all the all the fans look the melbourne storm have been away from home for a long period of time uh, the only other club that's been away for longer are the new zealand warriors so you know they would certainly deserve a home game and a home grand final if they got there but um yeah we we can't even pencil them in just yet would you get a crowd of eighty thousand at the mcg if the victoria government was to secure the nrl grand final do you think Oh, I, Victorians love sport. They love their rugby league as well. Um, you know, the development of rugby league in Victoria has been incredible over the last 20 years. And the Melbourne Storm and the NRL have done a fantastic job to promote the game. Um, let's not forget that Melbourne missed out on that scheduled origin earlier in the year. So I've got no doubt that they would they would put 80,000 in the MCG if that was the case. But I've got no doubt that it'd be a buzzing atmosphere at Suncorp Stadium also. All right, bit of footy to look at over the weekend. Uh, we may as well start, start with the top of the table clash, uh, the Panthers and the Storm. Uh, the Melbourne side uh, proved too strong. There were a few players, uh, quite a few players missing for the Panthers. Uh, Stephen Crichton as well, Bill. He's been uh, charged for lashing out with his boot, only copping one game from the NRL Match Review Committee. What would you think of the top of the table clash? Yeah, I thought it was, um, I thought it was a professional performance by the Melbourne Storm and they won six that's their 16th straight victory um yeah they they equaled the club record last year last week of 15 straight consecutive wins and now they've they've beaten it so they've they've written history in the in their own right um I looked the, the Panthers were certainly undermanned and they were undermanned in key positions they, they desperately need Nathan Cleary back to to get their structure back on, on track. And I think the rest of the, the things will fall into place. Isaiah Yo wasn't there also. Brian Toto, who creates so many metres for them out of the backfield. Um, so that, they were undermanned. And the Melbourne Storm put pay to them like they, they should have done. Um, you know, they're getting all their players back now and um, they're starting their run nicely. Um, it, it's it's easy to see why they're the favourites for the competition at the minute. What about the Parramatta Eels, Billy? We have a lot of our Sydney listeners that are Eels fans and I, I had a few emails over the weekend and again today from listeners saying, oh, Mark, can you ask Billy, what are our chances of breaking this uh, premiership drought that we constantly talk about? Have the wheels fallen off and how important is the return of Mitchell Moses, hopefully, this coming weekend? Yeah, they're in a big hole. They're, they're in an extremely big hole, the, the, the Parramatta Eels. They have two losses on the trot. And um, look, the Raiders a couple of weeks ago just were more physical than the Eels and just bashed them, to be honest. And last week, well, not last week, I think it was last Thursday night, the Roosters, well, they just didn't give them an inch. And let's not forget the Roosters, <laughs> talk about under men, mm-hmm. uh, they've got five of their stars Five or six of their starting players unavailable, and it was twenty-eight points to nil. So they're they're in a they're in a big hole at the moment. The Eels and Brad Arthur needs to find some spark in that team because the finals are, are soon approaching. You know the other team that's flying at the moment, my bunnies, Billy. I, I was doing some numbers. So since the bye in round thirteen, the Rabbitohs have scored two hundred and ninety-six points. That's in seven games of football. So mm. maybe they're just coming good at the right time of the year, mate. Yeah, they're, they're a dangerous football team with the football. They can leak points, uh, which is a concern, but the way that they can score points at will and the creativity they've got in their side with Walker and Luttrell, and they're so dangerous. Um, you know, if they can get 
Alex Johnston back on the field and, and everyone humming in the right direction at the right time of the year, um, they will certainly pose a threat to the big dogs. All right, 131873 is the number. You can email us as well, 2gb.com and text us 0460 873 873. First points in this match go to the Gold Coast Titans. A try scored by Big Tino for Suamala Awi. It's been converted by Toby Sexton in just his second game of the uh, NRL. So 6 0, Gold Coast leading Canterbury. That's after 15 minutes of play in the first half. 6 0 the score, Gold Coast leading Canterbury. A uh, few people wanting to weigh in on the grand final. Mark, I was so against the grand final going to Melbourne, but after what the Queensland government officials done on the weekend, uh, let's take it to Melbourne and the rest of the competition too from Darren. Uh, Mark and Billy, uh, isn't the myth 20,000 turn up if the MCG lights are on uh, just to see what's on? Uh, Melbourne would fill the MCG, I have no doubt, from Glen in Wollongong. And Billy, I might get your thoughts on this too. I just uh, I touched on it briefly off the top of the program. The high jump last night at the Olympics where mm. uh, the two uh, winners shared the gold medal. They agreed at the end of the competition, no, nah, we won't have a, a jump off, so to speak. We won't keep going. We'll both settle for the gold medal. Mersey says, Mark, both ath- athletes came away with a gold medal. That's a win-win. Nothing like sharing a prize and getting the same result as if you'd won outright. I'm a bit torn on this. Billy, I'd love to know your thoughts as a, a former mm. professional athlete. Oh, oh that's interesting. I, I didn't see the event, and um, I'm only getting the details now. But I, I wonder if you said, okay, if you want to share it, we, we've got to give you both a silver. Mm. I wonder if they would say, no, 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 we'll we'll continue going. I I don't think I think I would continue going. Um, fair enough if they both kept jumping and they they knocked the um, they they finished it on the same level, but. Um, was that the case, or, or did they just pull out when they suc- uh, successfully There were a jumped? few attempts, and then the official came over. And the, the rules changed a few years ago, and uh, they, you used to have to keep going until someone faulted or someone knocked the bar off or someone ended up winning the prize, whereas yeah, now right. uh, the two competitors can agree to settle and share the gold medal. I'm, I'm no, just I thinking... Don't, I as, don't like it. I don't like yeah, it. I, I, no, I'm just I, thinking, you know, you work hard to get to an Olympic Games, yeah, in this case yeah. five years, there's your big moment. Are you happy yep. to share the prize? I'm all about sportsmanship, and I think there was a there was a race. Was it a, a marathon or, or something like that? Where uh, a, a Kenyan got um, he got confused with some signage, and there was a Spanish runner behind him, and he saw that confusion, and they were on the finishing line. And he actually stopped and said, no, mate, this is the way. He was going to yeah. win the race. I, I, I'm okay with that, but stopping when you've got a little bit more to give, uh, not me. I'm interested in what our listeners think about it too, Billy, because it's certainly uh, got some debate happening in and amongst my circle of friends. Uh, our little text message group's been going off, yes, with some foul language as well. Some think, <laughs> oh, beautiful stuff, great sportsmanship, win-win, gold, gold, two gold medals. Others are saying, turn it up. You're in, in the high jump final. You want to mm. win the damn thing. So let us know what you think, folks. 131873 is the number. You can text us as well, 0460 873 873. We'll get to your calls in just a sec as well as Roosters playmaker Drew Hutchison. He's going to join us after the break here on Wide World of Sports. Billy Slater, Mark Levy for Wide World of Sports back around the grounds midway through the first half. 6-0, Gold Coast leading Canterbury. 6-0 the score, the Titans leading the Bulldogs in the first of tonight's two games at Suncorp Stadium. Let's bring in a man who's had a, a pretty solid few weeks for the Sydney Roosters. He's wearing that number six jumper and doing a magnificent job. I speak of Drew Hutchison. He's on the line right now. G'day, Drew. Hey, boys. How's it going? Mate, really well. Thanks for joining us on the program, mate. You've been through a fair bit this year, but you look like you're enjoying your football, and, gee, you're playing well, mate. Congratulations. Keep it up. Oh, thank you very much. It's just, um, yeah, obviously coming back in the last few weeks to just try to try to work on my own game, and um, thankfully the team's been playing really well as well, which has, has made it quite easy to transition back in. Yeah, one guy that has been playing extremely well is Sam Walker, your your halves partner. And congratulations on your season so far, Drew. It's it's been outstanding. You've only played twenty six games in the NRL, but you're you're the the senior member of this halves partnership. What's what's your responsibility there? I notice you've taken control of the kicking game. And how do you nurse Sam Walker and educate him through this next period? Um, yeah, well, that's that's um, that is my role exactly. Is just to sort of play that steady head and um, although I've only played 26 games I'm sort of I'm a bit older I'm 26 years old so um, yeah I, I like to sort of take the pressure off Sam in, in a way where he can just sort of come out and play his own game and um, you've seen how exciting he is and the skills that he has it just it just suits the way that he can play off the cuff and um, while I'm sort of in control of the 
the sort of field position and, and that side of the game, which is quite important. It was a it was a fantastic performance against the Eels, keeping them to nil. How quick does Trent Robinson get years over that performance and and onto the the grand finalists from last year this week in the Panthers? Yeah, it was um, it was as you said, it was a really really good win. Um, yeah, as a team, we just defended really well, and I think that was that was just um, sort of a stepping stone for what we want to achieve for this weekend. I mean, we've got a big task coming up against Penrith, and uh, yeah, Trent Robbo sort of. He's a pretty straight shooter. He just told us that um, if we want to contest this competition and, and play good at the end of the year, we need to be winning these games this, like, that we play this weekend. Hey, Drew, can we go back a few weeks? Um, when I mentioned at the start of the program you were coming on, a few Roosters supporters got in touch and said, Mark, can you ask Drew uh, what his recovery was like from that uh, horrific injury you suffered earlier on in the season? From all reports, Drew, and you'll be able to, to sort of explain what, what you went through. It sounds like you, were, you went through a pretty rough time. Yeah, it was... Um, it was it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it was going to be. Originally, it was um, yeah, obviously the I sort of broke, fractured three ribs, and then um, my lung was punctured, which that sort of caused the most drama for me. Uh, every time I'd get out of hospital, it would wouldn't stay, it would deflate, and um, it's in terms it would collapse again. So that sort of happened three times. So um, on the third time, I went back into hospital, and the surgeon sort of had to perform operation to. Um, ensure that it wouldn't deflate again. And ever since then, it's been really good and haven't had any troubles with it. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed it stays up. Well, uh, I, most of the time I was on the football field, I felt like my lungs were collapsed, but <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't imagine it actually happening. But, uh, yeah, fantastic. Kevin. One guy that's really stood up this year in, in all the well-documented injuries that the Roosters have had is is your front rower, Jared Warrior Hargraves. How's he been? Has, his, has he lifted his voice um, since the departure of, of Boyd Cordner and Jake Friend and the like? Absolutely. I mean, the sort of bloke he is, he just, any time he walks into the room, anyone, everyone sort of stops and, and listens to what he has to say. And, um, yeah, he's such a leader of this of this team and this club. And um, not only just for players like myself and who are new to the team, it's, it's I reckon he, he just shows so much inspiration to the senior players as well. Like, he never shirks his responsibility and he's he's always, he's always the one that uh, everyone's sort of looking to and He's delivered every game this year, and it's it's such a pleasure having him on our team. Hey, Drew, one last one. It's about your coach, mate. To Billy's former coach, Craig Bellamy's signed a long-term deal with the, the Melbourne Storm, and the Storm supporters are rightfully cheering about that news. And I noticed the Roosters chairman, Nick Politis, has come out following that announcement to say Trent Robinson's not going anywhere. He'll be coaching the Roosters for 20 years. What's he like to play under, mate? Because we sometimes see vision at full time where he's sitting in the dressing room waiting for you players to come back in after a game of football. What's he like as a coach and what's he done for your game? Yeah, I mean, he's as a coach, he just, every single training session, he demands perfection. And um, I mean, as a player, that's sort of what you, what you strive on to knowing that every day you've got to bring your best foot forward. But uh, on the flip side of that, he's a, he's a caring bloke and he, he just he cares about you as, the, as a person. He, uh, as long as you, you you're becoming a good person and you're you're trying to be the best person that you can be, that's um that's what he really really enjoys about coaching. I assume, but yeah, for my game personally, he's just filled me with that confidence to go and perform my role for the team, and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. Well, Drew, you're a well-spoken young man. It's the first time I've spoken to you. I don't know whether Billy's spoken to you in the past, but keep up the good work, mate. It's terrific to see you playing good football, bouncing back from that horrific injury earlier this season. And um, if the Roosters get all the way through to the grand final, you'll be a real reason why they get there, mate. So keep it up and thanks for joining us. All right, thanks very much, Blues. Thanks for having me. Well done, well done Drew, Drew Hutchison. Isn't he doing a great job? And you talk about depth of yeah. football clubs. The Roosters have got that in, in bucket lights. Yeah, Drew's a, Drew's a player that that plays to his strengths. He, he doesn't overplay his hand. He knows what he's good at. He knows what he brings to the team, and he does that. He allows Sam Walker to get out a little bit wider and be that more flamboyant half. He's got James Tedesco in his back pocket. He just knows he has to control the kicking game and do all the simple things right. He's, he's a big half, so he can physically mix it with everyone, and he's doing a fantastic job. Like he said, he's only played 26 NRL games, but... He's a real leader in that side at the moment. He yeah, certainly is. Quick call from Des at Panadia. We must have his say about the grand final. Good day, Des. Hi, Levy. Hello, Billy Goat. How are you, mate? I'm <laughs> good, thanks, Des. Well, you are the you are the goat. Now, look, um, Billy. I know um, it's your job to like talk up that there's more than one team that win the comp. But seriously, if they're fit on grand final day, um, <clears throat> Storm will win the comp. 
They're just too what? good. And mm. um, just on your mob, uh, Lewis, uh, South, mm. um, I think Billy will like this analogy I'm going to use. Um, the teams they're beating up, and then, then they say they have to go and play Storm. It'd be like winning a 1,200-metre race at Gilgandra <laughs> and next start going into the Newmarket Handicap. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shatter my dreams, Des. <laughs> He's got Sorry, some good mate. analogies, Des. Analogy. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, yeah, you are right, Des. If the Melbourne Storm play their best football at the right time of the year, they're going to be extremely hard to beat because they don't beat themselves. And they've created so much danger in their team. They they've, they use the football from anywhere on the park and they, they're so dangerous. But they're still that methodical Melbourne Storm team that work hard without the football and, and that's why they're keeping teams like the Penrith Panthers struggled to score a try. They scored one late, mm. you know, bouncing over from dummy half. So they're, they're going to be a serious contender if they get their, their right luck with, with injuries and so what. Great call, Des. Thanks so much for it, mate, uh, for calling the open line. Thanks to First National Real Estate. We better take a quick break. On the way to the break, back around the grounds, 13 minutes left first half. 6-0, Gold Coast leading Canterbury. 6-0 the score. The Titans leading the Canterbury Bulldogs uh, late in that first half at Suncorp Stadium. Only try scored so far by a big Tino for Suamala Awi. Gold Coast leading Bulldogs. Six points to nil. Ten minutes left in the first half. 6-0, Gold Coast leading Canterbury. Only News update. Experience the convenience of buying your new Hyundai online with Hyundai's Click to Buy. Visit the Hyundai website to find your local dealer today. Lauren Howitz in the newsroom. Lauren, good evening to you. Good evening, Mark. Rugby league boss Peter Volandes is backing a plan to only allow people who are vaccinated against coronavirus to attend sporting matches in the future. The News New South Wales is seeking government permission to introduce the rule from next year. A COVID-19 outbreak at a Sydney aged care home is being linked to a Christmas in July party. 18 residents and two employees at Wyoming Nursing Home in Summer Hill are positive. Australia is pushing to include India in the next round of military exercises conducted with the US and rebates are on offer for farmers looking to prevent a surge in mice when spring arrives. To sport, as you've just mentioned, the Titans hold a 6-0 lead over the Bulldogs with 30 minutes played. And Mark, there'll be more news in about 25 minutes. Thank you, Lauren. Let's find out what's happening in Japan. An update from Japan. Thanks to the new Kia Cerato GT. Get mean. Yeah, Olympic update with Natalie Peters. Nat, uh, good evening to you. Good evening, Mark. Eight-time Olympian and three-time gold medalist Andrew Hoy is riding for his first equestrian medal since the Sydney Games. He's part of the Australian team that's ranked second behind Great Britain heading into the eventing team final. Our riders have 11 Olympic Games between them. To the velodrome and Australia's out-of-medal contention in the women's team pursuit after our riders clocked a time in qualifying that was way off their best. Germany, Great Britain, USA and Italy will fight for the medals. Three of them went under world record time. The best the Aussies can do in fifth is fifth, which is where they placed in Rio. Our men's team is up next, and in the men's, Italy's just broken the Olympic record. Australian diver Shishin Lee has missed out on the final of the men's three-metre springboard in his Olympic debut. He was ranked equal 12th after a promising open dive, but will finish outside the top 18 that go through to the final. There's heartbreak for the hockey ruse. They've suffered an upset loss to India in the quarterfinals. They're out of the games. Tonight, the Opals are chasing their first win in Tokyo. They'll need to beat Puerto Rico by 25 points to stay in the tournament. The Matildas come up against Sweden in the semi-final. They need to win to play for gold. Aussie runner Steve Solomon will feature in the semis of the 400 metres. Liz Parnoff and Nina Kennedy are in the women's pole vault. And mark an update on superstar American gymnast Simone Biles, who's pulled out of five of her six finals in Tokyo to deal with her mental health. Her name is on the start list for the beam final, which is on tomorrow night. That's the latest on the action in Tokyo. Great. Great news for Simone. Great news for all the American uh, gymnastics fans and gymnastics fans right around the world. Comprehensive as always. Uh, Natalie Peters there in our Olympic studio. Um, boys, call in regards to the high jump. They both couldn't clear the next level, so you can't do a jump off because they both can't do the next level and are both stuck at a certain point. Uh, Levy, if you're dead heat in the 100, by all means have a runoff. Different for a dead heat in the 10,000, the marathon. Good on them when they dead heated the high jump uh, from Jerry at Sutherland. Uh, Mark, watch the men's high jump. Both jumped well. 
well under the rules that changed. They couldn't share the gold uh, instead of a, or they could share the gold instead of a jump off. Uh, I think it was a fitting uh, way to end the competition, both getting gold from Peter at Hurstville. Uh, dear Mark and Bill, uh, well, Billy made this point. What do you think if uh, the two high jumpers were offered to share a silver and not the gold? Enough said. That's from Bevan. Uh, Paul from Bankstown. Grand final a must for Brisbane. Uh, Des from Panania, who called through, is a mate of mine. Good fella. Storm v Bunnies. Grand final and go the Dragons as well. Geez, you've got a few clubs there, Paulie boy. <laughs> I can't keep up. Uh, and Michael's in touch too. He's not happy with all this uh, talk of Melbourne Storm going through to win the comp. He says, boys, if you're going on yesterday, the top of the table clash, the Penny Panthers had five players out. Three tries to Storm are lucky. Wait till we get back to full strength. Disregard yesterday, boys. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bulldogs could have beat us yesterday as well. Did, did you hear that? Us. Mm. Us. us. <laughs> Pan <laughs> Panthers band. So, 100% uh, right. If the Panthers get back to full strength, they're, they'll, you know, they're a good team. Don't before, forget about them. Before we get to 60 seconds with Slater, Billy, I need a Macca's player of the round off you, please, sir. Well, you know what? I, I'm not going to give it to a player this week. I'm going to give it to a team. I'm going to give it to the Sydney Roosters. What they've been through and what they've endured this year in terms of their injuries, and, and we're not talking any old injuries. We're talking season-ending, career-ending injuries. They lost their, their two co-captains. They lost their star half in Luke Keary. Uh, Brett Morris, who's a real leader in their side and has been playing incredible football. Lindsay Collins is another one. And they just continue to play to a standard that is is the Sydney Roosters. Uh, I think they were incredible uh, on Thursday night. They won 28 points to nil over a top four contender. Um, so I take my hat off to the Roosters and they get my team of the week. Macca's team of the week goes to the Roosters. Team of the week. They all get a happy meal <laughs> and the little toy that comes with it. Well they done do. to the Roosters. They do. In the meantime, let's do this. Now on Wide World of Sports. <laughs> Sixty seconds with Slater. I don't even need to ask the great man if he's ready. He's just permanently ready. Always, By the way, always. another try to the Gold Coast Titans. They made a break from about 40 out. A good support play to the halfback. It was knocked down by Meany, picked up by the Titans. They're in again. Ten points to nil. Kick to come. Gold Coast leading Canterbury uh, with a couple of minutes left in the first half. Rightio, Billy. Let's go. How would you describe the work being done by the NRL to keep the game going at the moment? Absolutely super. How important are the re-signings of Craig Bellamy and Ryan Pappenhausen at the Storm? Yeah, smart move, isn't it? Really important for the future. Jaden Braley knocked out yesterday. He returned to the field of play after passing the HIA pro protocols. Were you surprised? Uh, oh, well, I'm no doctor, but it, it did look like he wouldn't come back. Who from the Channel 9 commentary team spends most time in the makeup chair? That's an easy one. He needs it too. Gal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you prefer to play the NRL Grand Final in Brisbane or Melbourne? <laughs> Oh, look, I don't care. Honestly, I, I think both deserve it. Oh, splinters. Can I the don't South care. Can the South Sydney Rabbitohs get the best out of Anthony Milford? If I'm going to be brutally honest, I think we've seen the best of Anthony Milford. Could we see Billy Slater's name appear in the form guide as a trainer one day? Yeah, maybe at the picnics, at how, the bush. How do you rate the performance of Kevin Walters in his first year as coach of the Broncos? I like what I'm seeing from the Broncos at the moment, so I think it's a pass. Has the biosecurity breach ruined the finals hopes and the season for the Dragons? No, their performances have ruined the seasons for the Dragons. The, the barbecue's an excuse if they want to use it. All right, and one last one. I'm going to sneak it in because if there's any kids listening or mm. people that have followed the career of Billy Slater, what was the best thing you were taught as a young footballer? Oh, oh as a kid, have fun. But when I got down to Melbourne, Craig Bellamy likes the analogy that hard work will beat talent when talent doesn't want to work hard. And, I thought that was a pretty good one. So I thought I'd better work hard just in case my talent runs out or I haven't gotten as much as the next bloke. And so, yeah, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't want to work hard. That's a good one. It's a goodie, isn't That's it? That's a good one. My boss once said to me, Mark, don't be afraid of success. I'm still trying to work that one out. Anyway, we'll go with Craig's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll take a quick 60-second break on the other side of this. Mitchell Pierce from the Newcastle Knights. You're listening to Wide World of Sports. You certainly are with Billy Slater and Mark Levy. And our next guest, uh, well, we're expecting his name to be read out tomorrow. Well, at least uh, emailed out by the club, the Newcastle Knights, and his return from uh, a hamstring injury. I speak of the veteran playmaker. I hope he doesn't mind me calling himself a, a veteran playmaker. <laughs> Mitchell Pearce. He's on the line right now. Hello, Pearcey. That made me feel real old, mate. <laughs> Jeez, you have been around a long, a long while, champion. You're flying. 
I don't want to believe that. I want to be feeling young and youthful. Well, mate, you, hopefully you return and you look like you're, you're playing youthful. How are you feeling, mate? How's the body and how's the hamstring? Yeah, no, it's coming come along really well. Uh, it was obviously really frustrating there um, to do that the first session up on the sunny coast. But um, just, yeah, dived into all the, the rehab and um, looking, to, looking forward to playing on Thursday as long as everything goes to plan, but I'm sure it will. Yeah, let, let me tell you, Mitch, when your body starts falling apart, you don't feel young. <laughs> <laughs> but good, good luck with your comeback, mate. I, I hope you get back uh, this weekend and have a, have a good run towards the finals. And, and just on that run towards the finals, you're in touch with the eight at the minute, but you know, you've, got, you've got three games up against the, the two bottom sides, and, and then you play two teams that are in the race for those finals. It's in your hands, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's um, obviously getting the win yesterday um, against the Raiders was obviously a massive game for us. We needed to needed to nail that one. Obviously, coming off two average weeks against Melbourne and the Roosters. So, um, yeah, look, it's been an up and down season, but we've put ourselves in a position to you know get to where we want to get to, and we've got a decent run home. So it's one week at a time, but um, yeah, we've got to attack. Yeah, one week at a time. That's our mindset. Yeah, it's only a four-day turnaround from from the game uh, the boys played on the weekend to Thursday night. How how's the recovery been? Has Adam O'Brien just backed off on the on the training a little bit this week? Yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? Like, obviously, there's not too much uh, you know history to sort of base your, your preparation on because there's not not too many four four-day turnarounds that have happened uh, all in the, re- the recent history. So um, the boys had the day off today. Uh, light walk through. We'll do a light run th- walk through again tomorrow, and then basically captain's run and go again. So I think uh, only going on sort of obviously you would have done it plenty of times, but backing up over after rep, rep games personally mm. a few days later, if you, if you had a good result, you always felt pretty good on the shorter turnaround. So I think coming off a win uh, as a positive, you know, looking at it from a positive, coming off a win, boys still feeling good about themselves. Hopefully that can yeah. uh, we can take that momentum into the game. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I used to like. But- playing short turnarounds because the, there was hardly any training and you could just get back out on the field and, and play. And, and like you say, especially after a, a good win and, you know, players playing really good like Kalen Ponga, like he's in he's in exceptional form at the moment. And like we said, we're only a, a corner away from um, from the finals. How important is he? Is he, is he the key ingredient for, for the finals for the Knights this year? Yeah, absolutely, Billy. Um, I think when KP's got his head focused... He's good anyway. He's good any time. But when his head's focused and, and clear, um, and when we set a good platform within our structure to get him the best opportunities to you know showcase his skills, that's when our, our team's at its best. You know. So uh, I thought on the weekend our halves steered the the game plan around better, kicked better, and that obviously allows Kalen to get more room in the positions he wants to be in. And when I come back in, it'll be a, my focus will be the same again. You know, just. Uh, the forwards are always laying a good platform for us. They've been doing that all year. So it's a matter of us halves kicking well and, and, and steering the team around in good good spots and then obviously letting uh, KP take his opportunities as, long, uh, as well as us halves. I can't let you go without asking you, Mitch, what it was like on Saturday. I mean, uh, I was on air at the time. My head's still spinning. One minute we're playing, the next minute we're not. What was it like for the players trying to get the information as to whether or not you are going to play that day and then finally uh, determining that you'll be back on the Sunday yesterday to play some football? Yeah, it was a weird, weird few hours. Obviously, um, firstly, obviously staying up here in Queensland, here you know, the the state was in three day lockdown, and then followed by the game going to Townsville originally. That was the talk. So it was about an hour to get ready for the team, and then there was a chance we might have been flying to Townsville. Then everyone took a bit of a breath, and then obviously found it all playing um, Sunday. So I think as far as bodies and mental health go, I think it was good to put the game back a day just for both teams. Um, just to give everyone a breather before the game, but look, we came out of it with a win, and that was, that's all that matters at this this time of the year. And uh, short turnaround this week, and we we'll be ready to go. All right, well, Mitch, it'll be fantastic to see you back this week for the uh, the Newcastle Knights. You're an important part of that team. Uh, play well this week, mate, and uh, hopefully you get through the rest of the season unscathed because you've got plenty to offer that Newcastle side, and hopefully some finals footy is still to come. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Good on you, mate. Mitchell Pearce from the Newcastle Knights, their youthful playmaker, their champion footballer, <sighs> and their champion good bloke. There he is. And it's so important to that team. We just spoke about how important Caelan Ponger is. If if Mitchell Pearce can come back uh, fully fit for the next two months and 
um, and play his best football, um, they're dangerous. Uh, look, they're still fighting to get in that eight. But like I said, they play the Broncos twice. They play the, play the Bulldogs. And then the Titans and uh, the Sharks, another mm. team fighting for that those last two spots. So I, I think if they can make it into the top eight into some form, they can beat a couple of these big sides. Yeah, all right. Uh, I, I'm just interested, Billy. I mean, and, and you know, I'm, I mean it nicely to, to Mitch that he's a, a veteran player maker. He has been playing. He's, his record speaks for itself. But those little niggling injuries as a player sort of towards the, the back end of your career, do, do they play on your mind a little bit, given he's had a, a couple of issues of late, or have you just got to get on with it and just go out there and back your body to get you through the 80 minutes? Well, he's played 300 games, so mm. I, I think it's fair. <laughs> you're okay to call him a veteran. Okay, fair <laughs> 303 enough. games, but <laughs> you, you're right, especially especially a hamstring because they're, they're injuries that can feel really good and then you just push it that little bit far or you get a little bit fatigued and mm. it just becomes vulnerable again. So, um, look, Mitch is well-versed in, in terms of injuries. He's come back from um, a whole heap of injuries in the past and, um, I think if he's if he's right to go and he gets fully fit, you know, he's he's a key player in that team. Look out. All right, quiz time. Once you know the answer, give us a ring. 131873. Make sure you're quick because uh, there are plenty of people that get in quick for the quiz. Uh, who am I? I was born in France but now called Penrith Home. Bit of an Olympic feel to it. My mother and father are both Olympians. I've competed internationally since 2008. I pushed hard to have the C1 included at the Tokyo Olympics. I recently added gold to my personal tally of silver and bronze. If you know who that is, give us a call right now on 131873. We're back to find a winner. Let's find a winner to the quiz. Mitchell, first through at Jordan Springs. Hey, Mitch, what's the answer, bud? Uh, Jessica Fox. Oh, superstar. Tick. Yep, she Here finally we. broke through for that gold medal. Well, only a mate, you're into the draw. Uh, stay there, we'll get all of your details. Uh, just before we come back and wrap it up, Brisbane Broncos, we're feeling Billy for Katani Staggs, another season-ending uh, injury. I'm intrigued as to what they're going to do mm. with him next year. What, what do you think his best position is? Yeah, just firstly, it's only an MCL, so it's not a, a serious one like he had last year. Um, look, I'd be I'd be reluctant to move him from the centres. I like the strike of Farnworth on one side and then Staggs on that right hand side. If they can if they can find a half, we know Reynolds is going to be in the seven jersey. Uh, Tyson Gamble's just re-signed, and also Billy Walters is going there. He's a he's a tough half, likes to run the football. If they can get the ball to these strike players out wide with some structure like they're doing at the moment, I'd like to find a six and and leave him in the seven. I'll right. leave him in the centre, sorry. All right, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, a bit of news out of the Dragons. Uh, one of their big-name players has suffered a, a pretty nasty injury. We'll tell you about that after this break. Halftime at Suncorp Stadium. Gold Coast leading Canterbury 16 points to nil. Still to come, Manly and the Sharks. Uh, Billy, some more bad news for the Dragons. Ben Hunt, fractured arm. He's going to be sidelined for the next month. Can they still play finals footy champion? Yeah, he's been their best player all year too. I think. Um, oh, look, I don't. Th- I don't think they can. Uh, they, they've already found themselves outside the eight, and they they play the Raiders, Panthers, uh, the Chooks, Cowboys, and the Bunnies. I'm going to say no. All right, you got some curry waiting for you. You got some football waiting uh-huh. for you, and then up early to feed the horses in the morning. Thanks, champion. Good That's to talk life. as always. <laughs> Thanks, mate. It's a good life. Good on you, mate. Billy <laughs> Slater, and a bit of breaking news out of the Olympics. Team Australia suffering a nasty crash in the velodrome. A quarter of the way into their qualifier, the men's team pursued Alex Porter's bike snapped in the handlebars. He crashed face first into the boards and has been checked by medics. Australia will be allowed a restart. We'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.